Hello and welcome to Morse's Math Morsels. And here we have, what does this funny looking uh, kind of letter E mean? Well, this symbol here is really the capital letter Greek Sigma. Yes, S-I-G-M-A, that is capital Greek letter Sigma, which stands for summation or the summing of a series of quantities. And that's all it means. And it's a shorthand, like most symbols, to uh, make something uh, expressible much more compactly and readily. On the left side, I have a series of examples using that sigma, the summation symbol. Beneath it is some starting point and assigned to a variable, which could be any letter. I call it n. N is a number. That's a commonly used letter with sigma. And starting at n equals 1. And n will be incremented by 1 each time. And it will end at 3. So this says, uh, find the sum of the numbers uh, 1, 2, and 3. So I start at n equals 1. And then uh, add the next uh, whole number, 2. And then finally the 3, which is the ending point. And that's just as easy as 1 plus 2 plus 3. Six. So that's all that summation was. Another example, again starting at n equals one and incrementing by one whole number at a time up to and including three. Two n, which means two times n. So when n equals one, two times one is two. So this summation will start at two. And then when n equals two, continuing the summation, two times two is four. Well, that's added in the sum. And finally, when n reaches its ending point 3, 2 times 3, 6, and that sum is 12. Of course, I can use starting and ending numbers other than 1 and 3, but for sake of consistency and in these uh, simpler examples, that's uh, starting and ending points I chose. The next example, n squared, just n times itself n equals 1, which is 1 times 1, or just 1. And then when n equals 2, 2 squared is 4, add on the 4. And finally our ending value of n, 3 again. 3 squared is just 3 times 3, which is 9. 1 plus 4 plus 9 is 14. And so on. Next example, this time have 2 to the n power. And I'm going to start at n equals 1. The 2 of the first power is just itself, 2. Then when n equals 2, that's 2 to the second power, 2 squared. That's 4. And then finally, taking on n equals 3, that's 2 to the third power, or 2 cubed. And that's 8. Add up these 3 powers of 2, 14 again. A coincidence that matches this other 14, so... That could have the makings of a good math problem itself. For example, find the summation where 2 to the n power summation will equal n to the second power. Well, that's for another time. One more example on the left side, n minus 2. Yeah, why well, just stay at n? All right, n equals 1, so 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And then when n equals 2, continuing the incrementing, 2 minus 2 is 0. And finally, n equals 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, add these three numbers, the sum is 0. And on the right side, I have some examples using k, another popularly seen letter for a variable with summations. We'll move again to the right side. 1 over k, just 1 divided by k. Well, k equals 2 through 4, so k is going to take on the values 2, 3, 4. And we're just adding the fractions 1 half, 1 third, and 1 fourth, and that comes out to 1 and 1 twelfth. Well, so far, so good. k equals 0 to, oh, what's this symbol? Infinity. So there could be no definite or discrete ending point. We just let a variable take on some value and continue all the way forever to infinity. So it can be as large as we like. 
And this is 1 divided by 2 to the k power, or the reciprocal of the powers of 2. So when k equals 0, that's 2 to 0 power, which is 1. So that whole thing is going to come up to 1 when k equals 0. For k equals 1, that's going to be 1 half. k equals 2, that's 2 squared. 1 over 2 squared is 1 fourth. And 2 to the third is 1 eighth. And then just add the three dots. The three dots are called ellipsis, indicating that the addition, the sum in, continues forever. And that will eventually equal 2. Uh, this uh, infinite sum has a finite value, even though we're adding an infinite number of fractions. Very interesting. Next one, a negative k. k equals 1 to 3. Very much related to these earlier examples, so I just threw it in here. Oh, negative k, we'll just take on the values negative 1, then plus a negative 2, and plus a negative 3, which is negative 6. And one last example, one of my favorites. Start at k equals 1. This will be 2 thirds. When k equals 2, this will be 2 over 3 to the k power, or 2 ninths. And then k equals 3, which will be, uh, come out to 2 over 27, 2 over 3 to the third power. And if you were to add up all those fractions, that sum would come out to barely 1. No infinite sum, and made much more succinct and easier to express using the capital letter Sigma, the Greek Sigma for summation. Thanks for viewing.